This is my 1990 Comanche Eliminator. It hasn't been running right lately. It's been running like it's down a cylinder. So we're gonna do a bunch of testing and change some parts and see if we can find a solution. I fixed a bunch of things when I first bought it. Fully redid the steering system. A new brake lines. Like I said, I think everything I buy needs brakes now. Other little random things. Redid all the wiring for the stereo because it had been cut out for some reason. It's been fairly reliable up until now. So we're gonna mess with it and see if we can fix some of it. So it's sporting a period correct Smitty built two bumper. It's not really my style, but I might keep it and fix it because it is growing on me. I was lucky enough to find those wheels uh, for sale used from an 05 Wrangler. And they're in really good shape for Michigan. So it's a Renix 4 liter. And that's part of my problem. I'm really unfamiliar with the systems. But this was pretty much top of the line. I believe the little Rado was above this. But this is pretty much as high as it went for the uh, Comanches. But it's been a good truck and it's hauled a lot of stuff to scrap and hauled a lot of stuff home for me. Now I delivered a bunch of bikes to a charity downtown, Detroit. And coming back, her idle started getting pretty bad. Hopefully just do a simple tune-up, spark plugs and wires. And if not, then I'll have to start doing normal stuff like compression tests and check the coils and everything else. Ran, ran fine for about the 45 minute drive down to where I went. And it was running horrible on the way back. So I'll start up and hear it. <laughs> throw this tune-up kit in it off rock auto and a set of champion plugs and see how she goes so the tune-up kit includes cap rotor screws other random parts the plug wires i bought a set of champion plugs and some dielectric grease because i've run out these plugs shouldn't be too bad to remove one in the back is going to be a little bit of pain and this one tucked in here is going to be a bit of a pain as well i numbered the plugs which is Probably pretty pointless, but use these pliers to take them off. Oh, hopefully these aren't going to be too bad. Nobody over torqued them. That does not feel good. Whoa, that one feels horrible. Try the next one. And that is will be as tight. Way too tight. Four is fine. Man, that is really weird. I'll get some other tools and. I don't like the way this is coming out. Well, I lied. Uh, the number two spark plug is the biggest pain in the ass. Just from location. It's going to be fun to put back in. Looks like she might have been down a cylinder for a while and I just didn't notice it. They've definitely seen better days. There's a lot of goo from right to left is uh, one through six. Throw the new plugs in. Well, gap them. Throw the new plugs in. Uh, cap and rotor wires and uh, hopefully she'll be running a little better anyway So I set the gap on the new plugs to 35. I'm gonna go check what the gap on the old plugs are. I'm assuming it's probably pretty bad It's definitely more than 35 just fits and that is 41 is what the old plugs are gapped to Possible. These are just the weirdest plugs to start. I might just have a weird angle on them. There we go. I guess I just had a weird angle. Sometimes you're having trouble starting the thread. If you spin it backwards, sometimes it'll line up and find the hole, and then you can spin it forward again. We'll go around and tighten all of them since they're all started. Get the problem ones last. So 
Now let's take the cap and rotor off. I'll match up the plug wires off the car. And then we'll throw it all back together. And hopefully she runs a bit better. Let's take the coil wire off. Just gonna do this the cheap and easy way. Match the coil wires up. I'm sorry, the plug wires up. Maybe some. There could have been a good reason why that wasn't working so well. I'll sort through all this dielectric grease these and we'll be back. So I wasn't gonna reuse the junky old split loom or convoluted tubing, whatever you might call it. I have new stuff, so I'm gonna use it. Stuff is always so fun to put on. We're ready to throw it all back in the car. I'm actually gonna blow this blow the distributor out and then I'll throw the new cap on. It's like the world's longest bolts. <clears throat> Coil wires on. and hopefully she's running on more than uh, four cylinders. <laughs> All running better, but it still has a mess. You can drive around a little bit too, it does. Yeah, she does run better. She's still not doing great. Well, Possibly down a cylinder, but I don't doubt it's a lot of low compression too. After changing the spark plugs, wires, cap, and rotor, she's still running on what I'm assuming is five cylinders, so I'm going to do a compression test on it. I'm lucky enough to have a fairly complete set of service manuals. So. Manual says the relays are here, so I'm going to pull them on it and make sure that it is out of fuel. The fuel pump relay is located under this cover. Turn these quarter turns, pull them up. And you can pull the cover out. This is the fuel pump relay. I'm also going to pull, pull the coil just in case, just for the safety factor. Then I'm going to pull all the plugs and wires and we'll get to compression testing. These are spark plugs one through six. That'll right, evenly meh until you get to six. So it might be my problem, child. I went to O'Reilly's and rented a compression tester simply because I don't have one or I didn't want to buy one right now. Compression tester comes with the hose, gauge, and an adapter. There are other sets that cover uh, imports because a lot of times they're different sizes as well. This is something you want to watch out for if you use rental tools. Uh, people don't always clean them very well, so you want to definitely check them out before you use them. Much better. I did end up having to use the adapter. Let's get the compression testing. Reset it and try it one more time. Maybe try it a little longer. Right around 100. There's no room to get in here. So I use the magnet. I should be able to show you installing the adapter and the uh, hose in the next cylinder because there's nothing in the way. Right at 120. I'm gonna install the adapter in the cylinder three. Now 
we'll install the hose. Now the gauge is installed and we'll get to testing. About 1.30 again. I know this isn't a real accurate compression test per se, but I, I did leave it for an hour when I ate lunch and it's basically held pressure in cylinder five. Cylinder 6 is at about 128, 130. I'm going to retest uh, cylinder 1. Well, I'll write everything down and uh, see what I can figure out. So here are the compression numbers uh, on the command sheet. Definitely 1 and 2 are down. 1's definitely the worst, but they're still not horrible. 140-ish is uh, considered normal. Plugs are back in, wires are back on. Fuel pump relay is now in. Throw the cover back on. Hopefully turn it over and uh, figure out my next step. She doesn't run that well, but uh, it runs. I'm gonna replace the ballast resistor with this new one that I bought for the other Comanche that I tried to get running in a couple episodes ago. Realistically, there's about a 0% chance of this actually doing anything with changing it, but it crosses it off the list. Just cleaning off the ends, just to give it a fighting chance. Give her a try. There's the pop. So we're definitely getting backfires, lack of combustion somewhere. Well, I'm just gonna keep tracing the problem. Uh, I'm not really sure, I'm gonna have to do some research. I think I've said it before, but I'm just not familiar enough with these Renex motors. to know exactly what's going on. Could be something really stupid. I just gotta keep working to find it. I don't have any milkshake in the oil and it's not overly gassy. Could be a bad head gasket and unfortunately with the way this cooling system works you really don't have access directly to the radiator i'll see what i can do i'm very lucky that with this comanche came a ton of extra parts one of the few things it didn't come with were extra vacuum lines or at least the ones i need anyway what i'm going to do is look over everything and i'm going to take the uh, compression tester back to o'reilly's get some vacuum line caps line and uh, get a couple things and try to narrow down the issue i need to try to replace this large vacuum line Basically, nobody has it or anything like it, at least not that I can find locally. I have to make some tubing. I have some more of this tubing floating around, so I might have to make a custom part. Cut this chunk of rubber off here and uh, see what I can make. Pardon me, I'll be working around the air show. I have this extra length of this tubing that goes back and around, so I'm going to try to make a U out of it.
I did some more random checking and this isn't even remotely tight and it's wet. So I'm gonna do what I can to replace this. I just cut the T back as short as I could so it'll fit quite a bit tighter in there. So that's not a permanent solution, but it should work at least long enough to help me keep narrowing down what is the culprit of the idle issue. I'm gonna pull the air intake duct off and see what I can do to clean up the throttle body, check the throttle position sensor and anything else that is connected to it. Why in the name of all this holy did they put those on with Torx bits? Free. That makes me happy. Ooh, oily. Even if I'm able to get this engine running better, it's still not long for this world. I would like it to stay running at least through this summer so I can keep using it to haul stuff around, but I'm not willing to drive it more than about 20 minutes at a time right now, which limits where I can go. I'm gonna clean the throttle body and probably uh, mess with the TPS and some of the other sensors, see if I can take them off and clean them. This is a throttle position sensor, at least I believe it is. I should be able to get a little bit of play out of it. Maybe I can uh, adjust this a bit. Might help with my surging and idle problems. Well, I broke the screw off in it, so I'm going to have to see if I can take that out. Oh, that's crusty. Just hosed it up with carb clean. Hmm, boring. Thankfully, the O-ring's still good. Let this dry out a bit and uh, see what I can do about that. I threw the O-ring back on and we'll see about getting it back in. I'm trying to draw it in evenly to distribute the load on the O-ring and hopefully not break it or tear it. I might simply be able to tighten this enough right now with the upper screw to at least get this locked in. Worst case, I'll have to drill it out. If that doesn't work, I can use the other throttle body. Let's see if any of the stuff I've done has made any help at all. For a drive. I don't really have the right equipment to film and drive. That'll improve as my equipment gets better. But believe it or not, it's running, I think, better than when I bought it a year ago. Well, we'll give this a shot. Still idles too low, but it's running a heck of a lot better. This is probably going to be mostly unusable, but. Yeah, you're just getting a really great shot of my knees right now. Well, 
it's running at least as well as when I bought it, which isn't perfect, but it's a ton better. I'm definitely going to call this a win. I'm going to do some more research on the Renix forums because this is almost like sorcery trying to get these things to run right, at least from my little bit of experience. So, in worst case, it's going to get the other motor. I'll show you in a second. This little guy is the other motor that came with that Comanche when I bought it. It's supposed to have around 90,000 miles on it. And try to keep it going through the summer because it, it does make me money hauling junk. So I'm glad the Comanche's running much better. A couple other things I'm going to try to do to it to improve it. Uh, I think the EGR is also stuck open. But it is burning oil and it's doing a lot of things that are going to be problematic. So I will be switching that engine sooner than later and doing a lot of other upgrades and repairs to it. So a sneak peek at something that's coming up soon. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to all that stuff and more stuff's coming. Thank you very much.